What's happening guys, Mr. Rouge again, and this time we're talking about the discovery of cells and the formation of the cell theory. So let's go back a little bit. Um, back in the 1660s, about 1665, uh, we get a new invention. We get the microscope. And the microscopes that are circulating around, um, they were okay, they were pretty decent for their time. However, they weren't able to see you know, cells at the time. Um, and of course, it was the hot item. All the scientists and all the naturalists, they're trying to get their hands on a microscope. Well, one gentleman by the name of Anton von Leeuwenhoek, um, he decides to make his own microscope. And he is much better at constructing lenses um, and grinding the lenses very, very fine. So he does this and he makes the first microscope. And this is actually a picture of the microscope right here. Looks kind of funky compared to the ones we see today. And he uses that to see living cells. And he sees them moving around. And keep in mind, nobody had any idea at this time um, that there was bacteria, that there was life so small the naked eye couldn't see it. Okay. So what he named them were animalcules. And that's a picture of uh, what he saw under the microscope. And I actually believe it was, um, it was gunk from teeth um, that he first observed under the microscope. Okay. And obviously few people brushed their teeth back in the day. So I'm sure there was a lot to see. Um, around the same time, we have another gentleman. Okay. So remember this guy's name was Anton von Leeuwenhoek. We have another gentleman in England and his name is Robert Hook. In 1665, um, he viewed cork, dead cork cells under a microscope. And this is a sketch of what he saw. So when he's looking under his microscope, he sees these cork cells and these ones are dead, so they're not moving around. And he says these cork cells remind him of the rooms that some monks lived in. Very, very small rooms. So he called them cells. Okay, this is where we get the name cells from. Because these reminded him of the rooms that monks slept in. So keep in mind, this happened in 1665 with the discovery of cells. And this is where we get the name the cell from. So uh, people start, you know, keep getting their hands on microscopes, they keep studying stuff. And um, later on, okay, later on down the road, we have another gentleman named Matthias Schlieden. And he was a German botanist. What a botanist does is they study plants. So he gets his hands on a microscope and he's looking at all these plants. And what he discovers is that every single plant that he looks at is made up of cells. Every plant is made up of a cell, at least one, okay? And that's in 1839, so this is a little bit of time later. You guys don't need to know the dates. I'm just um, giving the dates so you have a reference of time, okay? Uh, around the same time, we have another gentleman, Theodore Schwann. Now, this gentleman studied animals, and every tissue of animals that he looked at, he discovered that all animals were made of cells, Okay. Now, it can be easy to get these two gentlemen um, mixed up between Schlieden and Schwann. So the way that I remember this is Schwann discovered animals were made up of cells. And a Schwann sounds like swan, which is an animal. Okay. Schlieden, that's kind of a funky sounding name, kind of gross sounding. Things that are gross are typically green and plants are green. So that's how I remember those two names. Next, we have our last gentleman, Rudolf Virchow. Rudolf Virchow um, concluded that cells come from pre-existing cells, so they don't appear out of nowhere. Um, they have to come from a parent cell, okay? Uh, make sure you guys get note of this slide and the one previous to, the, to this, okay? Okay, so then those three gentlemen, okay? So Anton von Leeuwenhoek, and Robert Hooke, they were the first two to discover the cells. Schlieden, Schwann, and Virchow, these three gentlemen contributed to the cell theory. Okay? And what this, the cell theory states is, number one, all cells come from pre-existing cells. Number two, all living things are composed of at least one or more cells. And the last part, number three, the cell is the basic unit of organization in an organism. Okay? 
And let's see what these mean uh, a little more in detail. So all cells come from pre-existing cells. If we have one cell, um, that had to have come from a parent cell. It's not going to uh, spontaneously appear out of nowhere. So there was a famous experiment that actually proved this. Okay, so people used to think that there was something in the air that would create life. Well, there was a very smart experiment uh, that changed this. And what they did was, you know, people used to think if you leave meat out, that meat will create flies. Okay. So what a gentleman did was he got a piece of meat, put it into a jar, and left the jar open. And then they witnessed or observed all the flies um, going onto the meat. They got, this was their, um, their control, okay? So this right here would be their experimental group. They got the raw meat, put cheesecloth or gauze over it, okay? So the flies can't go inside, but they could smell the meat. And you would see that the flies were hovering around and they weren't able to go inside. So this proved that flies weren't being created. It's they were being attracted to it. Okay. So part one of cell theory, all cells come from pre-existing cells. If we look at part two, all living things are composed of one or more cells. Well, if you're living, you're at least one cell. And if you're more than one cell, well, those cells are going to form the different parts of your body. Okay. So part two, all living things are composed of one or more cells. And the last part, number three, the cell is the basic unit of organization in an organism. What that's saying is all of the different structures of your body are made up of different types of cells, okay? Um, all the different organs, all the different tissues, they all go back to the cell. So your muscles are made up of muscle cells. Your blood is made up of blood cells. Um, your brain and spinal cord are made up of nerve cells, okay? So that is the three parts to the cell theory. Okay, so first we have Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Um, he is the first uh, to see living cells, and he named them animalcules. Next we have Robert Hooke. He saw dead cork, named them cells, uh, because it reminded him of the rooms that monks lived in. Matthias Schlieden, this is much later, um, concluded all plants are made up of cells. Theodore Schwann concluded all animals are made up of cells. And then Rudolf Virchow uh, concluded cells come from pre-existing cells. These three gentlemen, oops, these three gentlemen right here helped form the cell theory, which states all cells come from pre-existing cells. All living things are made up of one or more cell and the cell is the basic unit of structure and organization in an organism. That is it for today, folks, and I'll catch you all next time. Adios.